Welcome to the virtual Crucian Cultural Cuisines segments. I have with me today Miss Sandra Gerard. How are you feeling I today? I am wonderful. And today, Miss Gerard, I know you're in many organizations <laughs> and also a practitioner of culture. And today we are going to be um, talking about our food ways here um, culturally. What do we have to learn about our cuisines today? Today we're going to do Green Gage, which is a lime preserve that is used in Vienna cakes. But because I've been making it, people have been using it differently. They've been using it as a jam, as a jelly. I have one person who loves it with cream cheese on bagels. So it is a, a sour lime consistency and taste. It's, it's, it's a little bitterish. So it's, it can be a, a taste that you would have to, to like over a period of time. And we're also going to do fresh guava preserve or guava jelly, but I'm doing it with fresh guavas. So it's going to be thick. It's not going to be a clear consistency. It's going to be a thick consistency. So first we're gonna start off with green gauge, which I always, and you said before, always known to be one of the traditional um, recipes, seasonings of a real crucian Vienna, seven layer Vienna cake. It is one of the layers. Yes. And it is made with green lime. And you take the green lime, which is this. And you can be, they can be local limes as long as they're limes, not lemons. Okay. These are local limes that I got from one of the farmers. Okay. So you're taking a green lime, you're going to feel it. You don't want it to be so thick that it's spongy like an orange. You want the rind to be fairly thin so you can feel it. You also don't want a rough skin. You want a smoother skin. Okay, smooth. Okay. And then you're going to take those and you're going to squeeze, you're going to slice them and squeeze out all the juice. Okay. And then you're going to cut off the ends. Mm -hmm. And this is what you end up with. Once you've done that, okay. you are then going to take these rinds and you're going to put them in a bowl, uh -huh. preferably a glass bowl or a white enamel bowl okay. because it is acidic. Yes. So you don't want it in a stainless steel or an iron. Oh, so so you or glass. even a Pyrex dish. Oh, okay. And then you're going to soak them in water and salt. Okay for 24 hours. 24 hours. Changing it every four hours okay. for 24 hours. So you need to be home when you're doing this. So you have to pour it or, out and then, and then put, put fresh salt, water salt and, and salt. salt. Correct, yeah. It's a process. Once you're done the 24 hours, you're then going to go to clear water. Just plain clear water because now you're going to wash away all of that salt okay. content. But you are preserving the rind. Once you've completed that, so now two days have passed. Okay. So you know that this they used to do at home when there were a lot of women doing a lot mm -hmm. of work and they would sit and process, talk and, yes. and process this. You're then going to grind it. You can use, of course, an electric grinder or a blender or an osterizer. And you want to come to a consistency of pulp. Right. So this is the rind, the entire green line. You want to hold it up for us? So, this is what you get. Oh, wow. And the juice is the natural juice that comes from it. Oh, wow. Yes. So, once we have this rind, mm -hmm. we're then going to cook it. And that's when the process begins making the preserve. And you are going to add equal parts of rind and sugar. I cut it down, so if I do a cup of rind, I do three quarters of a cup of sugar. So it's not super sweet. So let was, let's just review again. So you're going to get your lime um, and green lime. Green, lime. green limes. Cultivated they have, here. They have green, to be green. green. And then um, after you cut the back, as Ms. Gerard stated, then you have like a whole two-day process. But you're squeezing the, the juice, juice out. out. You're taking the juice out, out because you're utilizing this yes. part of the lime. Correct. And then we have, excuse me, and then we have to boil it and can change the water and the salt. No, you're not boiling. Hour. You're boiling. Oh, no, you're just holding the you're water. You're just holding. holding the water, correct. 
There we changing go. it every changing four, four hours. hours. So it's fresh water every okay. four hours. Okay. Once the salted water is finished, then you're going to fresh water. Would you say um, this recipe, um, as we know we have a strong colonial past, would you say is heavily based on uh, any Danish dishes or is it just a, a mashup of both African and um, Danish cultures? I don't really know. My recipe came from uh, Amy Mackay okay. and she has it in the Le uh, We Cook cookbook mm -hmm. and yes she did have a lot of Danish dishes you know in those days they used everything that they mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. so you had green lime you made lemonade what do you do with the skins you have to utilize you've got to use the skins so mm -hmm. let's make a jelly mm -hmm. so that's what we did so I guess it can come from from anywhere the Danes the African who knows it was the use of the entire fruit. We didn't let anything go to waste. And additionally to, um, since we are changing um, with our culture is changing and we do now have um, influences from neighboring islands and from our mainland and from international um, waters. Can you tell me a little bit about the infamous seven layer cake and what of the seven layer Vienna cake traditionally had. So we know one of those um, layers would be a green gauge and this is how we would make it. But you also have spoke to me previously about something like a tambran being a layer as well. There can be. So you have green gauge, you have guava, mm -hmm. you have tamarind, you can have red cherry, because remember we made we made jellies from all of these. Okay. So you have red gel, you have plum. Mm. You could use a plum citier. So any local fruit, but you did seven different layers. Mm -hmm. But one of the layers is also guava berry. And guava berry, of course, you have to pull out the seeds and you have to stew it and maybe grind it down. Some people do, some people don't. So you're gonna have seven different layers of a cake with different colors. Mm. So when you slice that Vienna cake and you put it on the plate, you have seven layers and you have seven beautiful colors yes. in it. And that's the beauty of the cake. So one is green gauge, one is guava, you could have the tamarind, you could have the cherry, and you always must have the guava berry. So just anything that's local, mm -hmm would make the seven layers. Some people do five layers, but a traditional Vienna cake is seven layers. And so now we're seeing Vienna cakes with maybe like three layers, but traditionally- That's a, that's a layer cake. That's just that what we should call a layer, layer cake. cake. But this is one of the items that would be in a it's traditional seven, seven layer, layer cake. Yes. Is a seven layer Vienna cake um, synonymous with the Virgin Islands or is it other islands that do seven layer Vienna cakes? I really don't know about a seven layer cake being made anywhere else and ours it was a Vienna cake from Vienna mm -hmm. and that's how it started and Wayne James had a beautiful article about the cake it was the uh, the Queen of Vienna who made it for her son so that's how we ended up with the Vienna cake and then it came through Denmark and it came here. But again, I don't know. I know people make layer cakes. I know we have a lot of people who bake and now mm -hmm. make a Vienna cake that come from different places. Mm -hmm. But I think they've all learned about using our different jellies and yes. jams. Mm -hmm. So. But it's just good to make sure that we document what was done traditionally. Yes. And, and I guess we need to continue doing some research and finding out exactly if the other, you know, if St. Kitts and Antigua and Barbados and St. Lucia, if they do a layer Correct. cake Correct. and whether it is like our cake, because yeah. everybody does a layer cake. So maybe that's something we'll do in the future. Vienna cake also reminds me of Madras. It is. <laughs> With all it the is. colors. It's a beautiful, you know, <laughs> and I have a piece. So let me show you what. So there you have. Wow, beautiful. And you have the green. Yes, seven layers. So what items do you have in right here? Okay, this has green gauge. This is plum. This is guava berry. This is guava. 
this is pineapple so you have one two three four five you okay there's another one in between there that you can't see so this is really six not seven one two three four five six so there's pineapple guava guava berry plum green gauge and cherry <laughs> let's look at the consistency here at the stove right because you already okay to so make once you have ground this up mm -hmm. these are your skins you're going to add your equal equal parts of sugar mm -hmm. or drop it down a quarter cup per cup so if you have two cups of of pulp you're going to use a quarter cup for the first cup a quarter cup for the second cup you're then going to put that into a pot adding the sugar and you're going to start cooking it and we're going to make our way to the store and then we're going that? yes you are all right one of the things that you need to know is that you must have wood spoons oh you cannot use metal spoons mm -hmm. wood wood okay all right because of the acidity of the limes right so here we have the freshly ground grated lime rind with sugar and you're going to cook this the trick of this is that you must continue stirring because it will stick to the pot how much sugar again once more so you're again? using three quarters of a cup of sugar to one cup of rind okay. if you feel that you need it needs to be sweeter then you can add i have been able to pull back on the amount of sugar just because people don't need all that sugar because it's very very sweet okay. and this is not a sweet jelly it is a tart mm. jelly so you're going to stir you're going to let it come to a boil but stirring yes. so you're not at full flame and it might take you an hour or two according to the amount on I would say a medium okay. a medium flame not a high flame because it will burn mm. and if it burns that's it you got to try it away and that has it's happened to me before process so again. it is and it can be very costly if you're doing a lot so i would if anyone wants to try i would say start with a little bit mm -hmm. and it took me i'm going to say it took me almost two years to get to this yeah. okay yeah. so that was constantly trying so once you have cooked this to the consistency that you want yeah. and there are times that you might find that it's not as creamy as you would like once it cools you can put it back in the blender or the grinder okay. and grind it up but then once this is complete then we're going to add some green food coloring oh okay and that's where we get the, the umph yeah. um of the green food yes, coloring yes it has a more yellowish yes. look at this time so oh, here we is, are yes, to the with, with the food coloring with the food coloring this is and that's what the, gives it its bright consistency yes. and, the look. and if mm -hmm. and if you notice it's boiled down yes so that's what you have and again once you add the food coloring at the very end you're going to stir it you're going to add a little bit at a time i have wrecked some by adding too much food coloring one drip at a time and, and just how much would you say you that's that's hard it's according to the food coloring that you're yeah, using right. and to the brightness of it and the richness so add a little bit and stir and until you like the color, color yes okay. this is almost just a little bit too bright but it's okay i like it yeah and it's fun yes it is you know the other thing is is that i also do green gauge not just for vienna cakes but also for persons who like it as a preserve yeah so so what would you say i heard earlier you said some persons use it on a piece of toast some people love it just on toast with butter some people love it with cream cheese it's delicious with cream, cream cheese, cheese on a bagel okay it's also great with peanut butter i mean it's just it's also a condiment for your food Oh. So if you're, you know, some people like turkey with cranberry. You could have turkey with green gauge. That's true. Yeah, yes. you could have lamb. You could have green you gauge. Because people use mint sauce. We so may you use mint. You could use so sauce. it's it's really according to what condiment. The other thing is there are people who make curries, and then they use a lot of condiments. Mm -hmm. 
you can also use green gauge as a condiment so it's up to your individual taste as to what you like and what you don't like but the consistency has to be smooth so that you can put a layer on a cake and this is the final consistency yeah and if you notice that when you put it on the spoon it's not dripping off by that you're you know it's falling off but in clumps so it's not a watery consistency that is nice it would be lovely if we had the ability to do a lot of distribution and get it throughout the other islands and and it land. is but here is the other thing i'm not using any preservative oh yes it's all natural it's all natural mm -hmm. so i keep it refrigerated yes I, how what, long would this last do you think i've had refrigerated for two years and it's fine but again not in the freezer just refrigerated. I, in the refrigerator okay wow but again it's also the consistency if i dried this out anymore then it would dry out in the refrigerator mm -hmm. so it's got to be a juicy consistency so it's not firm firm but it's also not watery so we're back with the virtual crucian cultural cuisine segments again i have with me miss sandra gerard and Mr. Gerard, what other dishes are we going to prepare today? We are going to make a traditional guava jelly. Mm, and you with, said it was from your home, from yes, your yard. Yes, I have a guava tree in the backyard, and I save my guavas. I will freeze guavas. Mm -hmm. I cut them and put them in the freezer. Okay. There are times that I will go through the process of, of grinding and, and making the puree and freezing that. Mm. So it's according to how many guavas I have and what mood I'm in. Okay. Because... You get tired of it it is also a long process because it cooks for three to six hours according to how much you have in the pot so we're starting off today with fresh guavas and they can have spots on them that's fine they're sweeter mm. so what we're going to do is you take the guavas and wash them well because usually guavas fall off the tree mm -hmm. and you pick them you're going to take out the stem and then you're going to chop them up. And that is chopped guava. And if you notice, this is the pink guava. There is a white guava. I have never used the white guava. There is a distinct flavor between the white and the red. This is the, the pink, the pinkish red. So that's what we're using. Once we cut that up, we put it in a pot and we boil it. So this one you boil? This is boiled, mm -hmm. yes. And this is what we have. And then we're gonna take this and put it through a strainer, a mesh strainer with a spoon, again, wooden spoon. And this is the pulp that comes out of that. So when you boil, the water is going to go over the amount of guavas? Just slightly over, over it. Over it, and let it boil. How long will it boil for? Until you can mash it. Okay, maybe 15 minutes? 20 minutes. minutes. Okay. And then you want it to be that you can put it in the blender or you can put it in the strainer. I put it in the blender or I have a Ninja, so I put it in the Ninja. And you're just boiling to make sure that it gets soft, soft. Correct? Right. correct? And then you let the water go. And then I save the water. Oh, you do? Yes, okay. because it's not that much water. So yeah. you're gonna need water in order to blend it in the blender. Gotcha. And then once you've blended this, this is the pulp that you get once you strain it. Okay. Now there are no seeds. Mm -hmm. but I also use the skin. So I use every Everything. part of the guava. And once we strain it, of course, this has seeds in it. We then don't have seeds. And this is the pulp. And this is the pulp that we're going to put in the pan to cook along with sugar and a little bit of lime juice for the acidity of it. And then we are going to cook that into a guava preserve or guava jelly but again it's going to be thick and it's not going to be see-through because you have the entire guava in it is this a recipe um that you learned later on in your life or is it something that was in your household as a younger woman my mother made it and she again learned how to make it from amy mckay amy mckay was a second mother to my mother okay. she taught her how to cook to do preserves she taught me to sew at a very young age she was a family member so we my mother made guava jelly and then as she got older my sister and i took it on and we have kind of adapted our own flavor hers was a little sweeter 
we've kind of cut back on the sugar a little bit. Okay. And so we've continued making it. You got a guava tree, you have to use the guavas. Yes. <laughs> so you don't yes. want them to spoil. Right. Um, and again, you uh, just like the green gauge, you can, this is a preserve. You could use it as a jam instead of buying jam at your local grocery exactly. store. Exactly. And again, there are no preservatives, so mm -hmm. it is 100% natural. But it has to be refrigerated. Yes. The one thing I will say to people is sometimes you have it out and it gets a little bit of white um mold the white mold is fine this black mold is really bad i say to people refrigerate it and how long has one of these in a jar lasted? ah years in the refrigerator wow years wow yeah. and so we're going to go over to the stove you said yes we are okay we're gonna make our way there so here we have guava jelly being made Ooh. now guava jelly boils for hours upon hours upon hours. This pot was three quarters full. And you should use a steel pot? And this is this is an iron pot. Okay. This is a seasoned iron okay. pot. If you're going to start making it and you're using an iron pot, you have to season the pot, which means that you have to oil it. Usually you put salt and you, you let it heat up mm. over time. So this is an old, old iron pot. So this has been seasoned. And wood spoon, you said once Wood more? spoon again. Mm -hmm. okay. And one of the things with making guava jelly is as you're making it and it's cooking, there comes, there's a froth, mm. a white froth, and you have to spoon that off. Okay. So you always have to have another pot okay. close by that you spoon off and you take off until that froth ends. And now we are just cooking guava jelly. But always remember that if you put let's say four cups of the guava pulp that you've already ground and put it in is going to cook down to two or oh. one and a half oh. and you have to be watching it it's not something that you can just put on the stove you have to constantly stir so when you have like a day off a saturday or sunday for most individuals um, and you're uh, lounging in the house, this is the time <laughs> to make it. And you're going to be in the kitchen yeah. because you don't want it to burn. So you're mm -hmm. also doing it on a medium fire, a medium to low fire because you want it to cook slowly, but you want it to cook. And you're going to continue cooking it to the consistency that you want. Mm -hmm. This consistency is still runny, so this is not ready yet. I would say that this would be about another hour. Ooh and then it will be complete. But this is guava jelly and this is guava pulp, sugar, and for every cup, I put a quarter teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay. So lemon for every cup of guava. Do you use guava, some of the lemons that you yeah, I saved that green, juice, yes. the green lime. Yes, yeah. I saved that juice so that we have it. And that gives it a little tartness because remember we're using skin and seeds and everything and then once we're putting it through we're saving the pulp so you're going to have a little bit of the acidity from the skins and if the browner the guavas get the sweeter they get okay so you don't want i don't like mine too too sweet, sweet right, right some people like it sweet so this will continue cooking for with us stirring more? for about an hour more and, to get and to a consistency the consistent the texture change would it be um a little bit more harder when it cooks it's going another? to be stiffer yeah, so okay. it's not going to fall off as it as will as be as falling as off in clumps okay. well, and like then that is your yeah jelly we call it jelly but it's like a jam, jam yeah. or a preserve isn't that awesome and it yeah. smells good oh yeah the aroma in, a, in this house and it's a pretty there. color and this yes. is natural. You, you just natural. You this didn't is have natural. To, because of the green gauge, it's a little bit more yellowish. Yes. Yeah. And then we put the food coloring and it turns green. This is the or this is this is more of an orange. Even though it's a pink guava, it comes out almost like an orange. It's just lovely to see um, how our food ways change and people use what they ha everything that they had to to make delicious recipes well also remember that we have red grout oh. so guava is also used for red grout. grout so when they took had bushels and and buckets of guavas they would peel guava they would use the skin to do one thing they would use the guava itself they would take out the seeds and they would stew them so you have guava shells 
Then they would take the skin and the seeds and boil it and make the water for the red grout or make jelly. So there were different ways of using mm -hmm. one fruit mm -hmm. in different ways. Yeah. Well. So we're gonna um, move back to our table and talk a little bit more about culture and cuisine for this virtual series. So we're back here at the big table and earlier we made green gauge and now we are probably, we're going to taste our guava jam. So this is how it looks when it's, it's cooked and it's bottled. So this is the consistency we're talking yes, about that it yes. shouldn't move. And it's not gonna fall off. So I'm smooth. getting the opportunity. <laughs> and so I could taste somewhat of how the, 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 the flavors of our red grow, which is one yes, of my favorite yes, desserts. Yes. Because it's the guava. Yes, the guava. And because this is natural. <laughs> but if you also mm -hmm. notice, you can you kind of taste almost like a little sandy. I and do. that's the skin. I do. And yes. I do taste some of a zing. A, a, there's a zing in it, like the lemon the that you were a talking bit of about. The lemon. Yes. This is way better, literally, than what I go to the store and buy for toes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is fresh. Yeah. It's also using the entire fruit. And it's lighter. It doesn't feel as heavy as store bought And it's not gooey. Yeah, and it's, it's not, not. glucosey. No. It's not ge gelatous. It's very light. It's light. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But again, it's there's no preservative. So the preservative is really the lime. The lime right. juice. Which is just adding a flavor to it. That's different. Now I also make at times I make a spicy where I add cinnamon and nutmeg and mm -hmm. cardamom and allspice. Oh. So it, 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 it has a taste of guava, mm -hmm. but it's also very spicy. So why do you think it's important that we document uh, Caribbean and our Virgin Islands food ways? My, my reason for doing it is my love of good food, mm -hmm. my love of foods without preservatives, my love of sharing mm -hmm. with other people mm -hmm. and i have the fruits so yes it does take time but i enjoy other people tasting something that's really good yes. and something that's your taste buds mm -hmm. it's it's in your mouth and you're just enjoying it and saying mm, that's really good now i taste this but i also think that for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren we need to let them know that there were things that we did with fruits and vegetables and other foods and that there is a love of saving and savoring our foods yes. and understanding that there are different textures and different tastes. If you got a guava jelly that you bought in the store that's really good, you could almost see through the guava jelly. This one has a lot of body mm. and it has a lot of flavor. Yes, it does. And again, you know, just that's it. That's a natural jelly. Well, you know we don't in the Caribbean when you hear the cat crow. <laughs> so I, I just like people to to understand that they can also do it. It's not something that I'm the only one. Anybody can do it. Doing you right. just it takes time mm -hmm. and it takes persistence to try it. My first jelly didn't come out good. Right. It was watery. You had to try it away and, and start <laughs> over new. But do little little batches. Yes. Until you get it to the consistency that you like. Mm -hmm. And then you just, you, then you're able to share with other people. Yeah, and people love things that are made with love and things that are healthy. Yeah. People are paying big money to have foods uh, that are uh, organic. Yes. And we have them in our backyards. <laughs> we do, we do. So it's important for us to follow our food ways. Yeah, and, and also share. Yes. Share with everybody. Share with you and say to you, you can also do this. But that's what festival time is about. It is. It is. It's about yeah. sharing. And and to think about it, you have a breakfast and you got titi bread yes. and you put this on a titi bread and a cup of bush tea mm. and wow. Delightful. Yes, there it is. So, Miss Gerard, thank you so much for being part of our virtual Crucian Cultural Cuisine segment. 
I know that you do so many works in our community and thank you for sharing and providing love. And thank you for coming and thank you for allowing me to share with you. This is just my little part of sharing of our culture and saving our fruits for the generations to come. Ah oui. Yes, ah oui. Forget <laughs> us.